Hello and welcome back to the OSM channel. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to change out the front brakes on a Hyundai Kona. This car in particular is a 2018 model, but this will cover other years as well. If you're also looking for the video on how to change out the rear brakes, check in the video description down below. I will be filming a video on how to do that as well, so definitely check that out. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is chalk the wheels on the opposite side of the car that we're working on. So I'm working on the passenger side. I'm going to chalk the wheels on the driver's side. Because this car is equipped with wheel locks, what we need to do is go in our trunk and look for the wheel lock kit. Alright, so with the car still on the ground, what we need to do is crack all these lugs loose before we jack up the car because friction of the tire on the ground is going to prevent the tire from spinning. So for the regular lugs, I would recommend a 13 16 inch socket. That seems to be the tightest fit. And then we also have this special security locking lug. So we found that special security uh, socket in the trunk. And what we're going to do, we're going to put that over this locking lug. We're going to spin it until it locks in. And then I found that a 21 millimeter socket fits the best over the outside of this socket. So let's take our breaker bar and crack this security lug. Now because I'm changing out the front brakes and the rear brakes, but in this video it will either be one or the other, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack the car up in the center and then I'm going to support the front and the rear with jack stands. So placement of the jack would be about in the center of the front door panel. So what you're looking for, you're looking to ensure that you position your jack on this blue rail right here. Ensure that you're not pushing up on this plastic panel. So I'm going to go ahead and start jacking up this car. And I'm going to jack this car up until the tires are about one inch off the ground. All right, now we need to install jack stands on the front of the car and the rear of the car. So this is right behind the front tire. What you're looking for, this blue rail, see how there's kind of like a little cutout here and here? Well, that's where you're going to take the jack, lift it up, and just position this right in between those two little cutouts there. Here we are right in front of the rear tire. You can see the blue rail, the two little cutouts right there. Take our jack stand, lift it up, right on the rail. Then what I like to do is lower the car down a little bit so some of the car's weight is on the jack stand, like so. We can go ahead and continue with the removal of this front tire and that's going to start by taking these lugs off the rest of the way. Now the first thing I'm going to do is take a pry bar and hook it on the lip of this brake pad. And you only want to do this if you are going to be replacing the rotor and front pads, which I will be doing in this video. So I'm going to take this pry bar and push back on this brake pad. And I'm just trying to create a good bit of separation between the brakes and the rotor. Next I need to remove a 14 millimeter bolt here and here. And these are for the caliper slide pins. Now utilize a brake hanging tool or a clamp or something like that and just take this caliper out, we'll hook this little hanger, one of these bolt holes right here and then we'll just hang this up on the coil spring like so. That way we have this up out of the way and we're not putting any tension on the, uh, the brake line here. Now we can take a pry bar and pry out these brake pads. Not much pad left on that inside pad, a lot of pad on the outside, so it looks like the inside was hanging up a little bit. So when we replace these brackets, we'll take a good look at that and see if we can figure out what's going on. Now to remove this front caliper bracket, we're going to need to remove this 17 millimeter bolt and this 17 millimeter bolt right here. Once those bolts are loosened up, you can carefully remove your caliper bracket. So now we need to remove the front rotor, and in order to remove the front rotor, we're going to have to remove this screw and this screw. So what I found works best is take a 3 8 inch drive socket wrench with an adapter for a uh, bit. This is a number three Phillips head bit. So what I like to do, put this over the screw and take a hammer, and gently tap on the head of the ratchet while I'm rotating this counterclockwise to remove the fastener. And that screw broke very easy. Do the same thing on the lower screw here. Just tap on the head of the ratchet and that broke 
very easy. Now, if you're lucky or if you don't live in the salt belt, this rotor may pop right off, but I'm in the salt belt, so this thing is a little bit stuck on here. Now, the spot you want to hit is right here, 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 and here. So ideally, if you have like a big, wide punch, that would be the spot to hit. I'm going to try using this chisel and a lump hammer. Before we install the new rotor, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to remove any rust we see on the hub. I'm going to do that with this wire wheel I have attached to my Makita drill. And that's really important to ensure that the new rotor remains flat on the hub and it doesn't wobble as we go down the road. That could be a big problem, so get all this rust off here. The second thing I'm going to do, take some Never Seize, and I'm just going to apply a light coating over this hub to ensure that when it comes time to change out these rotors in the future, that it doesn't stick as much to the hub. So let's get this rust cleaned up. Now these new rotors are shipped with a light coat of oil on them to prevent rust. So what you want to do, take some brake parts, clean up your starting fluid and just wipe off the light coat of oil that these come shipped in. Otherwise you may have some delayed braking action when you first install these. All right, now this is ready to be reinstalled. So when it comes to reinstallation, remember we have two holes for those two little screws. So just make sure that you line everything up properly. Like so. All right, the screws are back in. Now we can go up on the table and we need to service the caliper bracket. All right, so now let's service this caliper bracket. So the first thing I like to service are these slide pins. Now when I push down on these slide pins, they should be responsive, they should move in and out. This one's a little slow to respond, but it is moving. Same thing on the other one. They do slide in and out, but they are a little bit slow in terms of response time. So the first thing that you need to do is remove the pin from the rubber boot. All you do is just pull on this, give it a little twist, I like to rotate a little bit as it comes out, but you can see we have a little bit of old nasty grease on there. I don't know what it is, but it seems like the grease they use from the manufacturer never seems to be of the highest quality. Might be intentional, so they get you back in the service department, but I like to put it back in the hole, spin it once more, just try and get as much of that old grease off there as possible. Now this is the good stuff. This is what I'd recommend you using. This is ceramic brake parts lubricant. And I use this for the slide pins and I also use it for the slide brackets for the brake pads. So I like to lubricate these pins. I like to put an extra little chunk on the tip right there so when we insert this back in the hole, uh, there's just a little bit of extra uh, lubricant down in the rubber. So now I'm gonna take this, rotate this and push it in and that boot should pop right over the pin. Now this is the slide pin that I just serviced and as you can see, slides in and out nice and easy now. Uh, if you do have a lot of rust on your slide pin, you have two options. You could either replace it, which is what I recommend, or you could take some sandpaper, sand it down, and just get it to the point where it slides in and out as effortlessly as possible. So we need to do the same thing on the other side, so we'll service this slide pin. So now we need to service and replace these slide brackets. So these slide brackets are what the brake pad ears slide on. And now what can happen over time is there can be some rust and dust that build up underneath these slides, therefore reducing the distance between these slides. And then what happens when your brake pad goes to slide in and out, because there's a buildup underneath this slide, it could cause that brake pad to seize, get stuck, it won't release. And I think that's what was happening. Well, that's definitely what was happening happening on our interior brake pad. So first thing we're gonna do is take a flathead screwdriver and pop this off on either side and you can see some, smut, uh, some schmutz came out of there. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll pop this slide bracket off. See that crud falling out of there? Not a good sign. So now that we have these brackets all cleaned up, 
There's no rust or corrosion buildup. I like to take a little bit of brake parts lubricant, just lubricate the shiny metal to help prevent any future rust and corrosion from forming. From there we will take our new slide brackets. We're just going to pop these into place. So unfortunately the new slide brackets that came with my brake kit are too wide. See how wide they are compared to the old ones? So I spent the last couple minutes brushing off the old brackets and we're just going to reuse those. So I have the ceramic brake parts lube applied to my caliper bracket. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and reinstall the old slide brackets. And I always like to pop those in place and just take a little hand, tap them down, just to ensure that they're seated all the way. So we're, we'll repeat the same thing on the other side of the bracket, and then we'll go ahead and reinstall this bracket. I'm going to take our two 17 millimeter bolts. Now before I install these brake pads, what I like to do is take a little bit of this ceramic brake parts lubricant and put a little bit on these slides, being very careful not to touch the rotor. If you get any of this on the rotor, you're going to want to wipe it off immediately because this could cause some braking issues. For the fronts, one brake pad is going to have this little, I, I believe this they call this a squealer. So what happens when the brake pad wears down to the point where it's hitting this little piece of metal, it's going to start squealing. This goes on the inside. So the brake pad that doesn't have that squealer, of course, goes on the outside. So what we're going to do, put this right in the tabs. Push it on like so. Might have to play around with it a little bit to get it in there. The inside brake pad. What we need to do next is install these little springs. So there's going to be a little hole right here, right here. So we will put these springs in the brake pads like so. Do the same thing on the top side. All right, so there's a little hole right here and here. And those springs just help the brake pads to back off when we don't have the brakes applied. All right, this is looking good. So now we need to compress this brake piston. Now this front piston does not have any electronic motors or anything like that. So if you want, you can compress this piston down the old fashioned way in which you take a piece of metal, put it across the piston, take a seat clamp and then just clamp this down. But if you have one of these, a brake compressor tool, this is definitely gonna make your life a little bit easier. So what you do, you take this cap, insert it into the uh, piston, Insert the tool into that cap we put in the piston. And then what we're going to do, we're going to spin this nut, pushing this backing plate against this back part of the piston bracket. And we're going to take our handle right here and we're just going to rotate this clockwise. And if you take a look at the piston, you'll see that the piston starts to compress in. felt that piston bottom out all the way, so now we'll back this tool off. And now we can go ahead and reinstall this piston. So to install this piston caliper bracket, uh, first thing you want to do is ensure that there's no weird twist in the brake line. Brake line set up properly, so pinch down on these brake pads, slide the piston over the pads, and what you're looking for is you're trying to line up these holes with the slide pins. The top hole is lined up. I'm going to take my, I think this is a 14 millimeter fastener. So we'll get that lined up, get that top fastener started by hand. Now we can reinstall our tire. Now we can carefully jack back up the car to take all the weight off the jack stands. We'll remove the jack stands. And we will slowly lower the car back down. All 
All right, and one of the final things we need to do here is to torque down all these lugs. According to my research, these lugs should be torqued down to 90 foot-pounds, so get your torque wrench. I'd encourage you to do your own research and ensure that that's the proper torque spec for your vehicle, but what we're going to do is we're going to torque these in a star pattern, so bang, 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 bang. Now, of course, repeat the process on the other side of the car. Once you finish the other side of the car, before you remove the wheel chocks, come in the car, pump the brakes several times until the brakes become firm. I feel that the brakes are firm. Now you can go ahead, remove the chocks, and that is how you replace the front brakes on a Hyundai Kona. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate a thumbs up, and as always, I will catch you on the next one.